What is this thing? If you said thermos flask, you're quite correct. It even says so on the side. There it is, thermos. A thermos flask is a special container for keeping hot things hot or cold things cold. Sometimes it's known by another name. It's called a dewer flask, after the man who invented these kinds of containers. Sometimes they're called vacuum flasks. Have a look at this one. It has a wide mouth, and you can see that the important part inside is actually made of glass. With this one, I can unscrew the base and take the whole flask out to show you. That's the flask part itself. The plastic container is simply to keep it safe. There it is there. That's a vacuum flask. And it has a double wall made of glass and not much in between. In this case, the glass is silvered. Let me show you a model of a vacuum flask. It's a bit like one glass inside another. There's one glass and it contains in the bottom some little hundreds and thousands of the sort of things you put on your birthday cake. Now, if I put another container inside it like that, what happens is we have this double wall container, but there's a space between the two of them. Now, if I seal that space up with some modelling clay, plasticine or Play-Doh, something like that, we now have a sealed space between the two glass walls. Now, the little hundreds and thousands represent molecules in the air. Now, those are rather a nuisance because if you're trying to keep a hot thing hot or a cold thing cold, those little particles bouncing backwards and forwards, and they're doing it constantly, just normal air, help the heat to get out or the heat to get in. And they don't help you to keep the hot thing hot and the cold thing cold. So, what happens is, if you're making a vacuum flask, you need to suck out most of the air, remove it cause a vacuum. A vacuum simply means there's not much there at all. Most of the air has been removed. Now, you can never remove all of the air. There'll always be a few particles left. But it's a bit like getting this container down to this stage here. Now, if I shake it around, you'll see a few of those little particles rattling around, but nowhere near as many as before. And so the loss of heat from a hot substance inside or the gain of heat by a cold substance inside is reduced enormously. Well, these things are not only used for picnics and football matches, they're also used for keeping other materials hot or cold. Have a look at this one here. Now, I'm going to put gloves on because the stuff inside this vacuum flask is liquid nitrogen, and the temperature of that is about minus 196 degrees Celsius. So cold that it can give you frostbite if you get it on your fingers. And if you look down the bottom of this flask, you'll notice the double wall, probably. Can you see one container inside the other? If I rub some of the frost off with my fingers, there, you can see it now, can't you? But it's very effective because this stuff, liquid nitrogen, is a clear liquid. I have some in an ordinary plastic jug here. And it bubbles away, changing from liquid into the colourless gas nitrogen all the time, so that this jug only lasts for about five or ten minutes and then all the liquid nitrogen is gone but when I put it into the vacuum flask the liquid nitrogen will stay there for about 30 minutes so it's certainly a very effective way of keeping the liquid nitrogen as a liquid now normally it's just changing into gas all the time in fact if I pour some onto the table it changes even more rapidly because the table is a bit higher temperature than the jug. What happens if we pour some of this liquid nitrogen into a bowl of very hot water? Guess and see if you're right. Here it goes. Well, have a look at that. We form a very dense cloud because what's happening now is the liquid nitrogen is turning very rapidly into the gas and this is so cold that you're getting a real cloud forming. That's a real cloud that you can see there. Here's something else you can do with it. There's a container. It's a tin can, and if I pour some liquid nitrogen into that, what's happening to it already? Changing from liquid into gas, and the gas takes up more space. So if I put the tight-fitting lid in place, <laughs> off it goes. Want to see it again? What happens, of course, is the liquid nitrogen changing into the gas builds up the pressure and so blows the lid. Right, one more time. How about that? Well, liquid nitrogen normally isn't in containers like that or that or that. It's transported in its own special vacuum flask, a large steel container, which once again has a double wall with a vacuum between the two. Very important stuff, not only for science experiments like this, but also to make frozen foods and also to use in industry and medicine. Liquid nitrogen.